Hello, Painstream people. Painstream. Well, first of all, I got all this going on. Went to yoga this morning already. Such a productive day. I woke up at 3.45. I didn't go back to sleep. So, I went to yoga early. <coughs> Sorry, I did two classes. And that's why this is all crazy. I don't know what to do with it. And then, what do you think about this lip color? I have this little pouch in my bag that I probably, I never go in. Because if I move it, it messes up everything in my bag. So I never go in it. And, um, but there were these hair clips. So I was like, oh, I want those hair clips in there. So I got them out and I looked in this little pouch. And it takes up a big piece of my bag. And I was like, my purse. And I, which is a tote bag. It's big. Um, it takes up a large chunk of room. So I was like, what? What's in here? I should look and see if I even need any of this stuff. Did I need any of this stuff? No. But there was this little lipstick. <clears throat> it's this color. I think it looks pretty good. It's little. It's just a sample size, so it won't stick around for long. But it'll be good for a couple nights out. Anyway. Guess what? Last day of the night. Book number one, what's up? Uh, oh, congratulations to us. Who's us? Me. <laughs> Me, because I'm the only one so far that's ever going to see this. So that's why I could do all this and this and this and this and no one has to know. Anyway, let's get started. Okay. Oh, this. So this one. One more page will be on this book. What women want and men don't. What women? Oh, no, no. So, what women don't know and men don't tell you. Ha, ha, ha. So sexist. Just the name of it is sexist. But let's, let's go on. Let's finish it up. Ready? When a man acts like a child, his behavior forces his wife to act like his mother. Hmm. I mean, it goes both ways, right? If anyone acts like a child, people around them <clears throat> either run or have to start take compensating, right? So they act like the parent. <sighs> you know? Hmm. What gives you what what gives you the idea that I've been in this situation? Um these things take time to vet out when you're dating someone, right? They don't come out right away. They kind of come out when it's like you're in it. And then it's like harder to get out. So if this is happening to you. Don't feel bad because you're in it. Just either try to fix the situation or just go, just get out. Life's too short. Um, you know, I definitely am the, have the abandoned ship model of relationships, which is okay for me because I'm okay with that. I like, I like dating. I like meeting new people. Um, and clearly I'm not a uh, commitment. Yeah. Uh, I'm not commitment phobic, but I'm certainly not commitment. Um, commitment is not my goal. Let's just put it that way. My goal is happiness. So that is what it is. If it's in a commitment, then that's good. If it's no longer there, then it's done. Because I'm the most important thing to me. Um, you know, as I think I should be. Not in a selfish way. Like a bad selfish way, but in a self-love-ish way. Let's keep going. Characteristics of an immature man. And hey, listen, I'm not saying I'm better than anyone else or my way of living is better than anyone else. It's my way of living. You live however you want to live. You do you, boo. Boo-hoo. Characteristics of an immature man. Same as for a child. Now, I hate to say this, immature man. Look, it's a list. I'm sure it's right from the book. I didn't, I didn't write this book. 
wrote the notes from the book. And I happen to be a woman, so obviously I'm going to write the notes and read books directed at women about men. But um, I'm sure there are books directed at men about women talking about the characteristics of an immature woman. I'm sure they're the same as a man. So let's let's run them down. <clears throat> Center of uh, let's change it to characteristics of an immature adult person which are the same as for a child. Center of his or her own universe. Insensitive to others. Temper tantrums. Are you with an adult that has a temper tantrum? What? What? How are you not running? Like, just, just go. There's no, don't even think twice. No. Irresponsible, non-communicative, Demands his or her own way. Only subject to concrete authority or threats. So police, military, um, government, boss, or threats. Ultimatums. <clears throat> yeah, that's all true. Balance is key. No man should be able to receive all the benefits of being married without the cost of commitment. Balance is key. Nobody, no man should be able to receive all the benefits of being married without the cost of commitment. I mean, I guess. I don't, I don't know. I'm conflicted by this because, I mean, marriage is a commitment, right? So what does that mean, all the benefits of marriage? I don't know, I mean, that makes it sound like marriage is a bunch of benefits. It's not. There's a bunch of negatives too, right? I mean, I don't know. The way that I feel about marriage right now, for me personally, um, <clears throat> is that um, I, I, I wonder, for me, I don't intend to get married again. I definitely am not having kids. I don't think I can, and I don't want them. Um, but, so, if I don't have kids, I don't see the point of marriage. For me. Um, to me, I think it is um, much more an indication of love if I am with someone and someone is with me, not because they have to be, or because they need a lawyer and tens of thousands of dollars to get away from me, or I from them, but that they're with me because they want to be with me. And I'm with them because I want to be with them, because they bring positive things to my life and I bring positive things to their life and we therefore want each other in our lives. A lot of people stay married for reasons other than that. And that's to me, um, less about love. So it depends on what your goal are, I guess, what your goals are. If your goal is to be married, then Okay, if your goal is to experience authentic or as authentic, real and deep love, then, you know, I don't necessarily think it has to be through marriage. That's my personal belief. Um, but yeah, marriage and commitment would, would go together. So I'm going to drop that. Feel however you want to about marriage and love and commitment. <sighs> Unrest is the Holy Spirit trying to tell you that your heart is not safe. <clears throat> yeah, that's probably true. Holy Spirit, higher self, um, unrest. So if you don't feel good about yourself, if you have negative emotions, you know, Abraham Hicks talks about this. It's your emotional guidance system. So it's basically um, unrest, uh, an uncomfortable feeling. It's a feeling. And it's something telling you 
something's not right, you need to fix it. You need to change something up. Um, interesting because earlier, I feel like earlier in this book, they were talking about head over feel, thinking over feelings. And now, I mean, I don't know the context of the whole book. I have to read it again and I'm not gonna, I probably don't have it anymore. Um, but now all of a sudden unrest, which is a feeling, uh, is the Holy Spirit. Don't listen to your feelings, but if you have a feeling that we think is valid, it's probably the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, I think they're all connected, and I think your feelings and emotions are important, and you should listen to them. Exercising patience and keeping your boundaries intact will give you peace. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. Keeping your boundaries intact. Now, I mean, your boundaries can be fluid, right? Not fluid by someone else. Like, you... Someone else shouldn't determine your boundaries, nor should they um, influence them. You are the keeper of your boundaries. So, um, and no one can judge where your boundaries are. That's for you to decide. And exercising patience, you will have peace. Yeah, I mean, being true to yourself is basically is what that is. Living your truth. Ba -ba -ba. All right, <clears throat> that book is done, I'm pretty sure. Hopefully it doesn't show up in another, no, in the next notebook. Or, or I'll probably just skip it if it does, because I'm tired of like, I just want to say happy things. So let's, let's, let's do some happy things. Let's, let's get a quote from Abraham Lincoln. And in the end, it's not the years of your life that count. It's the life in your years. Oh God, that's so true. Let me tell you, if I died today or any day hereafter, I am fine with that. I had a great life. I had a bucket list that I wrote when I was like 25, early 20s. I've done most of the stuff on it. I've done way more than I ever expected I would do in this life. And, um, and less, too, right? I mean, I thought that I would do <clears throat> I don't see much greater things in, in the career space, but finding happiness and pursuing things that I enjoy have been way more fulfilling than any career success could possibly have been. I mean, maybe, I don't know, I didn't have the career success, but at least according to what I thought I would, according to what other people think I, I probably have, um, but it's all relative, right? So, I, um, yeah, it's not the years in your life that count, it's the life in your years. Dance while no one is watching, or like no one is watching, just sing in your car loud to the top down. There is more to life than increasing its speed. I don't know. This says Mohandas, not Mahatma, Mohandas Gandhi. So maybe that's a different person with the same last name. Maybe that's a relative. There is more to life than increasing its speed. Yeah. Increasing its speed is actually, I think, uh, a negative in your life. It'll go fast like this and you'll, it'll be a blur and you'll look back and go, what, what did I do? That sucked. I missed it. I didn't enjoy any of it. All courses of action are risky. So prudence is not in avoiding danger. It's impossible. But calculating risk and acting decisively. Make mistakes of ambition and not mistakes of sloth. Develop the strength to do bold things, not the strength to suffer. Um, I'm not sure how to say the first name, but it's either Niccolo or Niccolo Machiavelli from the book, The Prince. Yeah, that's very true. I'll, that book I, I, was very confusing to me, <laughs> um, but I'll probably have to look at it again. All courses of action are risky, so prudence is not in avoiding danger. It's impossible. It's impossible to avoid danger. Forget about it. Forget about it. 
Calculate risk and act decisively. Yes, I've jumped out of a plane twice. Why? Because the chances of me dying are very slim. Right? I mean, there are way more risky things that we do every day. Because we do them every day. We don't think about it. But they're more risky than jumping out of a plane. <clears throat> Make mistakes of ambition and not mistakes of sloth. So go for it. Go for it. Just go for it. Who cares? You're going to die anyway. So are all the people around that you're going to be embarrassed in front of or whatever. Who cares? Who cares? Develop the strength to do bold things, not the strength to suffer. Oh, God, give me strength. Hmm. Well... You have strength. You'll get through the suffering. But the strength to do bold things. That's, that's rare. And finally, the last quote from this notebook. I hope it's good. Failure will never overtake you if your determination to succeed is strong enough. Ogmandino the greatest salesman in the world. So that was a great book. And I think um, it's one that uh, Matthew McConaughey had read, I th if I remember correctly, um, when he was first starting out as an actor. Failure will never overtake you if your determination to succeed is strong enough. Yeah, that's true. It won't overtake you. You might experience failure, but you just have to keep going. I mean, and honestly, look at him. Not doing too bad. It's from the heart. Um, failure would never overtake you if your determination to succeed is strong enough. Yeah, that's true. Whose determination is that strong? Not that many people. Probably not you. Probably not me. At one time I had that. And I achieved the things I wanted to. I lost it. And not in a sad way, just in a like, hmm. I don't have a burning desire for anything besides happiness that much. And happiness I'm not getting through external things. Happiness I'm getting internally. So I rather, I'm following that. And that does not include working insane hours at jobs that are soul sucking to make a lot of money to buy things. And I can just enjoy life. In the kitchen counter, talking to my phone. Congratulations on the last notebook. Peace out.